boyfriends and girlfriends do. And somebody rolled up on her and shot her in the back and she died that evening. And to me, it hit me very, very hard as the council member. Every single time there was a tragedy like that, it stopped me in my tracks. But this one especially, why was it that we had a park closed a block and a half from where she was shot? And so we went to our Rec and Parks Department. We said, could we do something in Glassell Park to open the park late at night and to bring arts and education and athletics programs? And I'll never forget our first press conference when we put together a program that was called At the Park After Dark because it was just like tonight. It was the face of Northeast LA. And one young man came up after I was done speaking, after all the politicians and leaders spoke. He said, do you mind if I say something? And he was only about this tall. I said, any, any young man that tall with that much bravery, come up. And I gave him the microphone. And he was kind of, he had to bend down here to be heard. And he said, you know, I'm a tagger. And I went, oh no, what did I just do? <laughs> he said, I tag people's you know, garage doors and on their benches and I tagged on the sidewalk. And I thought this was getting even worse. And then he said, but before tonight, nobody had ever given me a canvas. And tonight I'm not a tagger, I'm an artist. And this was a young man who would have joined the local tagging crew. That would have been a gateway to joining the local neighborhood gang. And maybe if the criminal justice system had touched him, it would have been something he could never unwind, that knot. But that night, he became a person. A person with a vision, a person who painted a new canvas, and a person whose life was turned around. And thanks to Mayor Villaragosa at the time, he and I worked on growing this program to become summer night lights. First to one, and then eight, and then 16, and then 32 parks. We fought hard for this park to be included a few years back. And I want to thank the community for making sure Highland Park was a part of this. It was clear that something had to change back then, and it's clear that something has to change now. It's clear that we're seeing that the success of this program in 20 of the 32 summer night lights locations last year, even as crime ticked up around the city, it stayed the same or even decreased in those parks. So here's how it works. Summer night lights takes a rec center or a park in a neighborhood that's challenged with resources, with too much crime. And I wanna give a shout out to Northeast Division, which right now in this city is the lowest in violent crime in the city of Los Angeles. The men and women who have been doing the hard work to make that happen. I lived in Northeast Los Angeles for 15 years and still think of it as my neighborhood, but it's bringing in the folks to run workshops on healthy cooking, silk screening, bike repair, bring in community resources to share information. Police officers get to know the people that they serve and vice versa, young people get to know those police officers as well. And finally, we hire young people from the community because we need more jobs for our young people in Los Angeles. Our unemployment rate has been cut in half. It's at one of the lowest levels we've seen, more jobs than ever in our history. But for young people, there's not enough jobs for them. And this summer, there's going to be 15,000 jobs for young people because we know the old expression, nothing stops a bullet like a job. And we know that these young people can start out as volunteers, then become paid staff. And now some of them are leading the program right here. And people are taking notice. They're not just taking notice here in this city, but we have the Attorney General of the United States of America here with us tonight, Loretta Lynch. A woman who is the top law enforcement official in the United States of America, because she wants to see what's working, and she wants to help spread the word. Whether it's police cameras to make sure we have accountability on both sides of the thin blue line, or whether it's here, making sure that we stop crime before it happens. And that we see the tie-in, as so many people here thankfully have today, with poverty. When people get displaced, that means that a neighborhood isn't safer, it becomes less safe because the institutional memory of those who have been here is lost. Just a few months ago, members of my grid team went down to Brazil. We're seeing in Central America our work um, taken on as a model. And we know from folks from Chicago, New Orleans, Newark have come here to learn about this program. But we are so proud to have the Attorney General with us because she's shown incredible leadership to help this country rethink its approach to criminal justice. Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to be tough on crime, but you have to be smart on crime. You have to have programs for people returning to our communities from having served their time in prison to make sure that they can have jobs, which is why I've stood up a new office of reentry for the first time since Tom Bradley was mayor, to help catch people as they come back. We've hired people with records in my office 
We've showed employers you can't put a box that takes people out of an interview before you even get to know them. We've asked colleges to do the same thing. The UC system doesn't ask if you have a felony. They just move forward and get to know the person. And we need to make sure that we have a restorative justice program throughout the United States. And this is the woman who's been leading that for President Obama. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> when I heard the Attorney General speak in Washington, it was powerful. Because she said, we've got to stop talking about people with labels. When you put a label like immigrant, or homeless, or felon, or addict, we lose the humanity of who people are. There are people who are homeless. There are people who are struggling with addiction. There are people who have served time. And until we recognize these are people, we won't get to a place where we can get past policies and find out what those people are about, get past statistics and hear their stories. So I want to thank all of our donors, because this doesn't happen for free. We put in a lot of your money tax money into this, but it is equaled by a lot of great institutions here. Disney, anybody ever heard of Disney? Let's give them a shout out and thank them for their amazing stewardship of this program. Kaiser Permanente, anybody go to Kaiser? Kaiser Permanente is also one of our great <laughs> sponsors. Give them a round of applause. The Dodgers, anybody ever heard of the Dodgers? Seven and a half behind, but we're going to come back. Second place is better than third. Sony, let's give Sony a round of applause. The Weingart Foundation, let's thank them. Yeah! LA 84, which is the legacy of our Olympics, when we made a profit for the city, and if we get them back in 2024, you guys want to bring the Olympics back? Because we can make sports programs free here. And representing a new donor to Summer Night Lights, if you look around and just find the tallest guy back here, who is that? That is Mr. James Worthy of the Lakers, because the Lakers Foundation stepped up as well to be a, hard, a part of it. Let me also thank Captain Arturo Sandoval of our Northeast Division, the men and women of, uh, of Northeast Division, Rec and Parks General Manager Mike Scholl and Frank Herrera and the rest of the Rec and Parks staff. Give a shout out to them because they're here all year round, not just in the summertime. Uh, Jeff Gorell, my Deputy Mayor, Anne Tremblay, my great Director of Grid, and of course all the seasonal and permanent staff of SNL and Grid as well. Brevemente yo quiero decir también en español Es muy importante celebrar esta comunidad del noreste de Los Ángeles. Para muchos años, hace muchos años, yo fui un vecino aquí en el noreste, el corazón de la comunidad, el corazón de esta ciudad. Y este programa es un programa para nuestros jóvenes, por la juventud de Los Ángeles, porque ellos merecen la oportunidad a cambiar la historia, sus historias, la oportunidad a encontrar nuevos recursos, trabajos durante el verano y es importante atraer todos los recursos en la ciudad de Los Ángeles para la, los jóvenes en nuestra comunidad. Yo soy un nieto de inmigrantes de México, de este, este país. Mi abuelo fue un at-risk youth en Boyle Heights, pero él tuvo la oportunidad, uh, tuvo la oportunidad a cambiar su vida y él uh, luchó en la Segunda Guerra Mundial él recibió su, su ciudadanismo y él fue un barbero en la comunidad y su nieto es el, el, el alcalde de la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Cuando nosotros podemos uh, dar las inversiones a nuestros jóvenes, las oportunidades um, son increíbles. Gracias al fiscal general de los Estados Unidos, un aplauso para Loretta Lynch otra vez por su liderazgo y su visión a traer estos recursos a todas las comunidades. And thank you as well to our two chiefs that are here. Chief Terrazas, who is our fire chief. Let's give it up for the Los Angeles Fire Department. El primer jefe de los bomberos que es latino en la comunidad. Y también, I want to thank el jefe del departamento de policía. Uh, Carlito Beck, Charlie Beck. Give him a round of applause and thank him as well. And let me just end with some statistics. This year we've hired 352 young people from the community, age 17 to 24, as members of the youth squad. Get to know them. They're not just life changers. They are people who are life savers. And we know we can't count those lives that we've saved because they're still with us, and that's a good thing. We can only count those lives that we lose. But Make no mistake, it isn't the ones that have the title mayor or the ones wearing the badges. It is those people who are the frontline workers who are making the difference. So as we kick off this ninth summer of summer night lights, let's celebrate each other. 
Let's celebrate our city. Let's stay together to fight poverty, to raise our minimum wage, to keep people in their apartments, to make sure that all of us can see a future in which the opportunities we have in our backyard aren't defined by our zip code, they're defined by our hearts and by our dreams. And somebody who has done that is our Attorney General of the United States of America. Please welcome the one, the only, Loretta Lynch. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti, for that introduction. Uh, thank you to Chief Beck for also welcoming me.